it looks like we've now entered that stage where it's just gonna be gloomy and gray weather from now up until I want to say like mid-May um, so today I thought I'd bring you guys some cozy and warming meals that you can make for yourself during these kind of depressing rainy days I also tried keeping these recipes under a budget of one to two euros per meal, which I made that happen by going to Lidl to get most of my groceries from. Yeah, everything's so affordable there. Like the hummus costing 80 cents affordable. And then there's all these interesting vegan products that you can try there. This is not sponsored by Lidl though. I wouldn't be too mad if it were, if it was. All right, let's get into these ideas, starting with some super simple one-pot pumpkin gnocchi. Cut a small to medium-sized Hokkaido pumpkin in half. Yep, now I know it is Hokkaido. Remove the seeds from one half and then cut that into bite-sized chunks. I'm chopping up some zucchini. Also make sure to finely cut up some garlic and onion. Bring a large saucepan with a bit of oil to medium heat. Add the onion first, give that a quick stir, then add a pinch of chili flakes and the zucchini chunks. Let everything cook together for about 7 minutes until the onion's fully translucent and the zucchini has gotten a bit of color. Meanwhile, I quickly put together some vegetable broth. To the fried zucchini and onion, add the pumpkin bits, the veggie broth and the garlic. Bring everything up to a boil. Let this simmer for a good 10 minutes until the pumpkin is nearly tender. Then add a bunch of spices as it's simmering. We went for cumin, smoked paprika, pepper, fry seasoning. Also, if needed, add some more water along the way. After those 10-ish minutes of boiling, add the gnocchi. I used to think vegan gnocchi were impossible to find, but actually so many stores have accidentally vegan ones. Lidl, Rewe, Aldi for example. When adding the gnocchi, they might want to stick together, so just try to break them apart a little bit. Then finish the sauce off with lots of lemon juice and a heaping tablespoon of store-bought hummus. I also added some frozen parsley here. Make sure it's got enough salt. Then plate it up. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, perhaps add some sesame seeds for aesthetics and then dig in. Let's go over the pricing here. So all the ingredients measured out cost, I want to say two euros and 76 cents. And so since this recipe yields two to three servings, that would be one euro and 38 cents to even just 92 cents per meal. All right, so this next recipe was initially me trying to cook vegan Dwinjang Jige, but I feel like once I was done with this, it turned out to be something else. First things first, get some rice going. Then go ahead and chop up a bunch of vegetables. I still had some zucchini and pumpkin left over from the previous recipe. Lots of mushrooms, some spring onion. Um, keep a few of the green ends for serving and decorations later. And some garlic. Add a bit of vegetable oil to a large saucepan and bring the heat to medium. Saute the spring onion and the mushroom at the same time for about seven minutes. Then add the garlic, followed by some vegetable broth and the fermented soybean paste, the twinjang. I hope this is how you say it. Being able to read Korean would have been helpful here. Did not realize it was going to be so super spicy. So yeah, here I'm also just obliviously adding some extra gochujang and then some spicy vegan kimchi, which in the end that was still fine. It, it wasn't too spicy for me, then I'm adding one to two sheets of roasted seaweed here, which, you know, at any Asian food stores, you should be able to find these at a great price. Also add some rice vinegar, um, a tiny bit of rice or agave syrup, some salt and extra spices of choice. Let everything simmer for a good five minutes or so before adding the veggies. You could also go, like, instead of pumpkin, you could also do a potato or sweet potato or even carrot. Let the veggies boil until tender for about 10 minutes and then serve this over the rice. And of course, top it off with the tofu. I got a great two for one deal here. I cut this into thin slices and then added those to my bowl in the end as well. This was really, really nice. 
very cozy, very warming, and calculating everything together, we'd be at 1 euro and 63 cents per serving. Perhaps you already know that I wrote an ebook, like an e-cookbook, a couple years ago. I don't think I've ever actually shared any of these recipes online. Up until now, it's a super simple cauliflower pasta bake. Grab a small to medium head of cauliflower, remove the leaves and the stem and cut it into florets. Weigh out the florets so you have roughly the amount that you need for this recipe. Also chop up some onion and garlic. Inside a big skillet with a bit of oil, saute the onion first for about four minutes over medium. Then add the garlic, give that another two minutes before adding the cauliflower plus vegetable broth. Then bring this up to a boil. Let everything simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. Meanwhile, bring a separate pot of salted water up to a boil and then measure out some pasta of choice. Shortcut pasta works best here. Make sure to cook it for two to three minutes less than what it says on the packaging. I need to invest in some bigger pans. Preheat the oven to 220 degrees Celsius at this point. Transfer the entire contents of the pot to your blender and then add all the last few remaining ingredients. Um, also add some black pepper um, and perhaps other spices you like. Yeah, really, go wild with the spices. Now bring together the cooked pasta and the sauce and then transfer this to a small to medium sized casserole dish, something around 20 times 20 centimeters. Lastly, sprinkle over the breadcrumbs. In my ebook, it says to place the pasta on the highest rack in the oven and then broil this for three to five minutes. But honestly, I'm a little bit scared of this oven, so I just put it in the middle rack, cooking it for 15 to 20 minutes or until it was nice and golden brown. Let it cool for a few minutes before serving. This might sound like a strange food combination to some, but um, this pasta is really, really good with red pickled onions. I mean, I love pickled onions. To me, they taste good on anything, really. Um, so here's how I made these. Finally chop up about four red onions and then transfer those to a glass jar that's able to hold maybe two cups of water. Add some salt, sugar or agave syrup, apple cider vinegar and white wine vinegar. I think I saw this in an Emma Chamberlain video uh, a while ago, but I remembered her using hot boiling water when pickling her vegetables. I normally always just go for room temp, but here I decided to also try the boiling water. I guess that just cooks them quicker, but definitely make sure your glass container can stand the heat. Otherwise, it might suffer the same fate as the jug from my previous video. Let the onions pickle for at least one hour on the counter until they're nice and bright pink. You can store them in the fridge for up to a week, I would say. One serving of this comes up to 83 cents. Well, actually, calculating in the onions as well, it's maybe a little bit more, like 90 cents. For more bonus recipes, check out the ebook. I'm so bad at promoting this, but if you're interested, the link is down below. It was a bit weird having those two meals together, the, the rice and the pasta, but weird in a good way. Ati and I had a cozy little evening painting food photography boards, watching you. Moving on to recipe number four. This one's for a crispy potato bowl using the stovetop only. Grab some potatoes, wash them and cut them into little bite-sized cubes. Add those cubes to a large non-stick saucepan. Mine's not non-stick. We'll get to that in a minute. Add some water and let these potatoes boil or sort of steam for about six or seven minutes or until they're almost completely tender. Like soft, but not super soft. In the meantime, peel some garlic and um, just chop it up roughly. Remove the now cooked potatoes and give the pan a quick wipe down if necessary. Add a bit of vegetable oil plus the garlic chunks. Bring both up to medium heat and allow the garlic to cook for two to three minutes. Then remove the garlic and reserve it for the dressing. Now bring the garlic oil up to high heat um, and once it's nice and hot, add your potato chunks. As you can see here, 
Everything sticking to the pan, very much so. So I ended up having to transfer the potatoes to a separate, actually non-stick pan. Let them cook for about six to eight minutes over medium high, shaking the pan every 30 seconds or so, and then season them with a generous pinch of salt. You can also already blend together the ingredients for the tofu sauce that we're gonna be serving these with. So yeah, blend up some semi-firm tofu. Also add the cooked garlic, lots of lemon juice, tahini, a bit of agave syrup, and some salt, maybe some fry seasoning or any other spices that you might wanna add. Blend this up until smooth, taste test. This sauce is so, so nice. Serve up your potatoes, perhaps with some seasonal vegetables or greens. Of course, pickled onions make for an amazing addition here as well. And yeah, that would be my little crispy potato bowl for you. It only costs 1 euro and 56 cents per serving. For this last portion of the video, I just wanted to shout out some older recipes that definitely still fit into this budget fall and winter type theme that we've got going on here. The zucchini pasta from this video, it's delicious. The cinnamon raisin oatmeal, it's an old one, but still one of my favorites. The, the, the one pot vegan bolognese from last year's video, like last year's fall video, or these fairly new chickpea tacos are really good as well, I would say. Uh, thank you so so much for watching this until the end please let me know in the comments what is your go-to cozy budget meal to make on a cold rainy night and yeah i'll talk to you guys soon have a good week goodbye